Would the bows in Elden Ring work as actual bows? I want to address this kind of misconception about short bows and regular bows. From what I've seen in different media, short bows are often depicted like this, and heavier bows are depicted like this. These are similar to Asian mounted archery bows, and these are similar to the English longbows. But power in bows doesn't come from size. These are recurve bows, which means that they already have a lot of stresses already put on them. And these are composite bows, which means that they're usually made of multiple different materials. Sinew, bone, horn, wood. And those combined can generally put out more forces than regular wood bows can. So with this being a short bow having a lower damage and a lower range than this bow, I mean, you can make any size bow pretty much any draw weight you want, but these types of bows could get upwards of 150 pounds in draw weight, which is the amount of force that you need to pull the string back. You need to put 150 pounds on this arm on your back to draw those back. And that's in the same ballpark that English longbows were. So while any size bow could be any poundage, the size of a bow doesn't necessarily indicate the poundage. Starting off with these short bows, this is a recurve bow, so more powerful and probably shouldn't be a short bow. However, pointing out that it's not a composite bow since it seems to be all one material, and this next one that's mentioned is the composite bow and has multiple different materials. So again, these two bows would probably be stronger than you would think. And then they are in the game. The red branch bow is not a recurve design and looks like a solid wood design, so would probably be a relatively light bow. The misbegotten bow does look pretty unorthodox, you know, it doesn't have the standard bow profile. However, there are other mounted archery bows that are really similar to this, and you can see really similar types of bows from the Mongols. The heart bow, I mean, I don't know, bows fire usually because the wood is flexing, not like the string pulling back like it's elastic, so this doesn't look like it could really shoot too much. Unless it's like my daughter's bow, where it's just the string flexing because it's elastic and not the limbs moving at all. Now on to regular bows. The longbow is pretty much an English longbow, which, you know, pretty boring, not much to talk about there. The Albinoric bow looks kind of unorthodox because it's uneven, however it's not too dissimilar from the Japanese Yumi. Now it's said that this bow is used for wolfback archers, and if you look back into what I said before, I mentioned that shorter bows that were in a recurve design were more traditional for mounted units. However, again, the Japanese Yumi was often used from horseback. And there's a big reason for that that I'll get to later. I think that's the first bait that I've used to get somebody to watch more of my videos. Huh. The black bow seems pretty pedestrian. The pulley bow, I think that a renaissance, medieval-y type society could probably come up with this sort of thing. They wouldn't be as effective as our modern compound bows, however, they could still be quite devastating. The horn bow, and also like I previously mentioned, composite bows are often made with horn components, but not entire horns. Horns would be hollow, and they took strips from the horn in order to put on the bows in order to make compression and all the different factors work. This isn't a guide on how to make bows. And these look like antelope horns, and I don't think that the entire horn would really be beneficial for a bow. And like I mentioned, a strip of the horn can be good because, you know, that part flexes, but if you take the entire thing, then like this side needs to flex, this side needs to flex, that side needs to flex, it's putting a lot of different pressures on horns that it wasn't really made for, and that you haven't modified at all. I don't know, I'm not a biologist, I don't think it would really work how they have intended. The serpent bow might not work. Because, you know, you gotta draw it back and the whole thing has to flex, and I think those ornate snake heads on the design would be relatively weak points that would probably break off. I don't know, it might be able to handle the pressures, but I don't think that it would. You remember how I mentioned the Japanese Yumi and how they use a large bow on horseback? That's because they usually hold it by the bottom third. So the bulk of the bow is above them and the small portion is below them. They're able to maneuver on horseback with that. 
The Earth Tree bow is also uneven, but I think it could technically still work if you hold it by the lower portion, because that lower limb looks like it's more beefy than the upper limb. But if the upper limb is longer, then you can use it as more of a lever, so it wouldn't matter if it's a bit weaker. I don't know, I'm not a physicist, I'm not a lot of things. But I think that that sort of uneven design could work. The Great Bow looks like a big wooden bow. I mean, you could probably, if you could draw back, then you could use it as a bow. The Golem Great Bow is made of stone? <laughs> stone's not... Stone's not flexible. It, it would not be a good bow. The Erdtree Great Bow and the Lion Great Bow, if those things are flexible, then yeah, they could work. However, the place that they have for your hand looks really thin. So the amount of flex that the rest of it would have wouldn't really matter if that part can't handle it. It might just break. As for crossbows, I mean, they all pretty much look like they would function as crossbows. I mean, they've got limbs, they've got the body, they've got a trigger mechanism. They look like they could shoot crossbow bolts. The full moon crossbow I don't really understand. I mean, is it shooting that big disc? Does it have ammo inside that disc? I'm not sure if that one would function. Onto the ballistae, I mean, the regular hand ballista is kind of an oxymoron because ballista were huge siege weapons, and you would need to have some sort of inhuman strength in order to carry and fire that and span it, which is pull back the ropes to load the thing in and shoot it. The jar cannon, theoretically, yeah, it could work. It's pretty much like a regular cannon. You throw in the gunpowder, you throw in shot, you got a fuse that goes into the gunpowder, you light it, and it shoots out. I don't think I could fire it, though, because it would kick a lot, because, you know, it's a cannon. I'm sure you could. Just let me know if you could in the comments, but I couldn't. And with that, I have covered every Elden Ring weapon, and I'm kind of at a loss of what to do next, because this series has been really popular, and thank you so much for watching. I'm just hoping I can find something else that's popular. It's the next day. I'm gonna cover torches as well. I have like no voice right now, but the regular torch, it's pretty much a club. You could bonk things and set things on fire. I just really wanted to end this with bonking. Beast repellent torch, bonk, set things on fire, and there are definitely herbs and stuff that you could burn that other things wouldn't enjoy smelling. So you could do that. Just be sure that it's not something that humans don't like the smell of too, because you know, you're, you're using it. The steel wire torch is... The steel wire torch would be really effective because it's got wires poking out of it and those would get heated up. And even though they're kind of small wires and it doesn't have too much weight behind it, that would still hurt more. Now you might say, oh, it's just going to cauterize the wound. That's, that's a good thing. However, wound cauterization is more of an exact science than put hot thing on wound. You need specific temperatures exposed to the flesh for specific amounts of time in order to do the job. Because otherwise it'll just burn the flesh instead of, you know, seal off the wound. But depending on the design, it could be bad, because if those filaments go down from the top to the bottom to where you're holding it, then those might get heated up and it would be uncomfortable to hold. Sentry's torch looks like a more complex club that you could bonk things, maybe even a mace type thing. Ghost flame torch, bonk. Saint Trina's torch, bonk. 